Hello. Um, obviously, the uh, the purpose of this revision is to uh, tell you how to do uh, a usefulness question uh, on the Nazi Germany paper. Um, so I'm just going to take you through uh, various tips, ideas, uh, and then we're going to have a look at somebody's answer uh, to the question that's set below, which is how useful is source E for understanding life in Weimar Germany between 1924 and 1929. So um, pretty standard question. You're going to get one on your exam paper. Uh, just giving you sort of four key bullet points, really. Firstly, a source can be useful because of who wrote it. So, for example, it was a source from Goebbels talking about the role of propaganda. That it'd be useful because, obviously, Goebbels, as a leading Nazi, should really know what he's talking about. Or uh, it could be a propaganda poster, gives us a clear idea of the types of propaganda that was being used by the Nazis. Um, or if it's a source from Straysman, uh, explain what's going on in Weimar, Germany, um, that, again, that would be a very useful source. The content of the source, so the first bullet point is about this word provenance, the background of the person who wrote it, the audience, who they're writing it for, the, their intention in terms of who they wrote that particular source for. The bit that um, lots of people tend to sort of neglect and gloss over is to actually look at the content of a source. Uh, and that obviously does include picture sources as well, but it's a bit more straightforward, if you like, with uh, the content of written sources. Um, but it can be useful, uh, the content. Uh, so it may tell us a great deal about the reasons why the Nazis were unsuccessful in the Munich Putsch, uh, which we can then support from our own knowledge. A propaganda poster from the Nazis in 1938 may be useful in showing a particular policy used by the Nazis in terms of how it appealed to people. Okay, um, Use your own knowledge. The, the key, I suppose, to being successful in these questions is making sure that you can back everything up and show evidence of using your own knowledge to assess whether a source is useful or not useful. Um, so you have to talk about, you know, the usefulness of it, but also the limitations as well. Okay, um, so below, um, which just here, just highlight that, uh, you've got the question, how useful is source E for understanding life in uh, Weimar, Germany between 1924 and 1929? Uh, the examiner's mark scheme goes, level one, answers that just assert that a source is useful or not because they tell us something about Weimar, Germany. So just a really basic answer. None of you are going to fall into that trap. Um, Answer that explain that one source is useful or not because of its provenance. So just looking at the background of that particular source, who wrote it, what it was written for, rather than actually looking at the content. So you forget to look at the content. Okay. For level three, okay, you've got to look at both the provenance, so who wrote the thing and what their intention was in writing it, but also, okay, um, an understanding of its content and what that tells us about life in Weimar, Germany, and why it may be useful, okay? Now, what's the difference between that and level four? Well, level four, okay, it says, answers that develop out of level three, evaluate the relative importance or relationship of provenance and content, or consider the source in the context of other relevant sources. So what the examiners are really looking here for is for you to use that own knowledge to help you actually understand that particular source and its usefulness. Okay, so for example, if we look at this source over here, um, which is from 1928, and it's an advertisement uh, for a cabaret act in Berlin in 1928, so that's what you're told about that source, um, you can see, well, yeah, it's, it's useful in that it fits in with your own knowledge about the prosperity that's going on in Germany at that time, because if you look in the background, there's a car. Um, you also know from your own knowledge about cabaret and what was going on with cabaret. Okay, and the fact that Berlin had this thriving nightlife was at the sort of cutting edge of culture across the whole of Europe. But that alarm bell needs to start ringing, doesn't it? How typical is this as a source of what was going on in the whole of Germany during that Weimar period? Well, in 1928, well, you can argue well, it, it's not very typical of all of Germany. Berlin was buzzing, but other areas weren't. OK, so you've got to make sure you look at the provenance as well. Um, so the provenance is an advertisement. OK, so advertisements are trying to sell you stuff, give you a version of what life was like um, in Weimar, Germany. So again, the alarm bell should start ringing. So any information you're given about a source by the examiner, you're expected to use it.
okay so there we've got a few top tips up here okay and then the examiner's mark scheme here so remember for the top level okay you've got to look at the content of the source the provenance of the source to assess its utility and you've also got to show evidence that you're using your own knowledge to actually help you assess whether it's a useful source or not a useful source okay so we're going to have a look at Mariana's answer now okay sorry to embarrass you about this one Mariana so hopefully this is going to work here we go um, and we're just going to sort of mark this together I'm just going to point out the good bits in this and, and maybe a few ways in which you should could have improved upon it okay so if you're struggling with Mariana's writing here Saucy is only useful for understanding a small part of life in Weimar Germany between 1924 and 1929 so she gets off to a good start she makes a very clear statement the photo shows cars in the background which shows Germany was prosperous and doing well. This fits with my own knowledge that German economy was becoming more successful through the Doors plan. So look, she's given a specific example to back up that Germany was more successful in that period. The source is also useful for showing the huge change cities such as Berlin were going through in terms of culture. Source E supports the revolution in culture. More people were going to the pictures, the theatre, productions and other performances than ever before. To improve upon that, Mariana, what I would have done is include a specific example, whether that be Marlena Dietrich, Otto Dix, or, or whatever, just to show the examiner that you've, you've got that specific knowledge that you can give an example. For instance, you've said here a new form of art was developing as well as new modern styles of architecture. Well, that's Bauhaus. Again, if you're in the business of impressing the examiner, mention the Bauhaus as an example. Okay, she then goes on. Uh, there was also a more liberal approach to things as shown in Source E by the women in short skirts and tops. It was very different to the few years before. Source E is useful for understanding about the culture and economy of Berlin during 1928. Okay, first paragraph. So on to the second paragraph. Let's just scroll down here. It's going very slowly. Okay, however, Source E only shows one location in one year. Good, okay. So she's beginning to talk about the content of that source. So she's definitely ticking the box about content. The picture was taken in Berlin in front of a famous monument. It's actually the Brandenburg Gate, to be precise. Uh, well done for those of you who, uh, when you answered the question, spotted it was the Brandenburg Gate. It was probably taken in a very rich area and so is not useful in showing what the entire, um, what all of Weimar Germany, sorry Mariana, uh, was experiencing. In fact, many Germans were very conservative. Many Germans, you might want to get in the Nazis there. Unlike Saucy, which shows very liberal women in Berlin, Nazis would have seen this liberation as immoral. Good. Additionally, Saucy only shows the year 1928. So she's looking at provenance now. She's moved away from content. She's looking at provenance. So it's not very useful in showing life in Weimar Germany before 1928. The year of 1928 was when Germany was at its peak. So Source E doesn't give any understanding of when Germany uh, was not at its peak. So it doesn't give us an idea about life over the whole of that period. This source was made for the purpose of advertisement. So again, she's looking at provenance. Therefore, the source is, is posed. And that's me struggling with your writing there, Mariana. Posed and made with the intention of making Berlin look positive and attractive in order to attract people. Good. Excellent. It's unlikely in Berlin there were always cabaret dancers in the streets. And it's such an entertaining experience. This means that Saucy is not as useful how is it not made with the purpose of truthfully showing life in Weimar Germany? Good. Um, the year of 1928 is significant. Um, and one of the things that people tend to forget is that if you were living in the countryside in Germany in 1928, you're really struggling. There's an agricultural depression. World prices for agricultural produce have collapsed. And so incomes are beginning to go down. And so... If you're in the countryside, your experience of life in Weimar, Germany would be very, very different from cities like Berlin. So again, that's worth putting in. So if I'm looking for ways in which Mariana could improve upon this question, uh, then that's one of the things that she ought to look at. OK, so she's looked at provenance. She's looked at content. She's shown me enough evidence that she's got some specific examples and specific knowledge to help her understand the usefulness of that source. And then she writes a conclusion which is always good, good form for the examiner, is just to make a final statement about the usefulness. Um, I've just missed off the end of this, so I'll read the, the bit on her answer in a minute. Overall, Source E is not very useful for understanding life in Weimar, Germany, between 1924 and 1929. Whilst it um, offers a glimpse into how Berlin was doing, 
at its peak in 1928, it doesn't show the rest of Ge Weimar Germany was doing and does not reflect how the rest of Germany were living. Also, because it was made, and this is where I'm going to pick up her answer, sorry everybody, with the purpose of attracting people to Germany, it does not give a very precise or truthful reflection of life in Weimar Germany 1924-1929. So this is a good answer. Uh, it ticks a lot of the boxes. I would have liked a bit more specific knowledge in there to give it A. I'm probably going to say this is top level. So let's just go back to the mark scheme. Okay, so, uh, so uh, level four, answers that develop out of level three. And evaluate the relative importance or relationship of provenance and content and consider the source in the context of other relevant sources. Okay, she's definitely done provenance. She's done it well. She's spotted that it's a, an advertisement and that there are problems with that. She's spotted that it's from 1928. And that might not be that typical. She spotted that it's from Berlin. Okay, so she's good on provenance. Also, she's good on content. She's been able to link this into cabaret and the changes that were taking place in Berlin at that time. She's able to give examples of that as well. Okay, so she's ticking all of those boxes. So she's just into that level four. I'm going to give a seven out of eight because I think uh, she could have been a bit more precise with some of the examples that she actually did give. She mentioned the doors plan, that's good. That's why I'm sort of nudging towards that level four, but a few more precise examples would have led to a good answer, okay? So in terms of these usefulness questions, that gives you a fairly good idea about how you should approach them. Okay, thank you.